Nothing counts. Literally nothing counts. It's not for me though. We're obviously getting our money's worth. First year pass is 40%. You don't need to be fed anymore. If you don't use it, you lose it. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Hi, my name is Danika and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I thought I'd do a little overview of what it's like to study languages at university because it's the only degree I'm qualified to talk about having studied French and Russian at university. Um, and whilst I studied languages at the University of Edinburgh, chunks of what I'm gonna say will apply to whatever university you're going to, as long as you're studying languages. I wanna preface this by saying it's definitely one of those degrees that you really, really wanna do your research about where you're gonna study languages, because it really varies on obviously what language combinations are available at the university you're gonna to go to, year abroad requirements, what you're allowed to do on your year abroad, how many years you're gonna study for, and even the way you're examined can really, really vary. So yeah, really do your research on this one. But without further ado, I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but doing a languages degree is one of the most work intensive degrees that you can get at university. And every degree is hard, every degree's got its points that are harder than other degrees, blah, blah, blah. But it is one of those degrees where you can just keep working and working and working and there's just no end to it because you can always be doing more. You can always be learning more French vocab. You can always be listening to more Spanish radio. Whereas I know some other degrees, you get your essays, your coursework, your homework, you do it and you're done. Whereas I always had this kind of feeling in me that I could be doing more. And I'd just be sitting, you know, having a little jolly watch of Teen Wolf. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, Danica, you should be reading Le Monde, you know? And languages is definitely something like you snooze, you lose. You don't use it, you lose it. And then moving on to my next point, your timetable. You will have more contact hours than most of your friends on other courses, except for like STEM students and medics and stuff like that, who will have like labs and stuff during the week and they spend like the whole day there. In first year, I had 19 contact hours a week. Now I know that doesn't sound much when you're coming from school, but I promise you it is, especially when your mates on like in history or whatever have 10 hours a week, maybe less. This is University of Edinburgh specific by the way, I don't know about any other unis. But as each year goes by, you have less and less contact hours. You obviously go on your year abroad in third year, so there's no contact hours during third year, although I don't know about the changes now with, you know, how COVID's affected everything. But in fourth year, I had 13 hours a week. My boyfriend had two contact hours a week. We're obviously getting our money's worth if we've got so many contact hours, but yeah, you'll have more contact hours than most other courses. So just so you're prepared for that. Exam season. Okay, again, it differs quite a lot from UK universities because we pretty much do all of our exams before Christmas, which is really nice because you're not like thinking when you sit down to like your Christmas dinner or just, you know, whatever you're doing during your holidays, thinking, oh, I need to be studying for my French oral exam, you know? Which is lovely. Whereas most other UK university semester one exams will be in January. And then to add on to that, the next bit of bearer of bad news news is that you will have more exams than the rest of your friends on other courses. Again, I'm generalizing and this is my experience and what I know of things, but because you will have so many different modules being a language student, you're gonna have more exams, obviously. So you'll have your written exam, you'll have a listening exam, you'll have a speaking exam or speaking presentation, and then also your modules that you've chosen to do, aka literature, the history of the politics or whatever country it is of the language you're studying. Yeah, sorry about that. But the nice thing is nothing counts until third year. Let me say that again, nothing counts, literally nothing counts until third year. So first year and second year, you just have to pass. I think first year pass is 40%, amazing. Second year pass is 50%. Then you get into your honours course, which is third year and fourth year. Third year is 10%. And so everything is riding on your final year, which is 90%, or at least when I was studying anyways, and I graduated in 2020, so I'm not that old, come on now. So yeah, literally nothing counts until your third year, and most of the stuff that counts is in fourth year. So 
obviously like do your work in first year or second year but just know literally nothing counts until third year or fourth year unless you actually like bomb third year and fourth year slash you have i know personal circumstances or something's gone on where you can't sit your exams in third year and fourth year and they take into account the stuff that happened in first year and second year so let's talk about modules and stuff like that like i said study french and russian again um and i had grammar classes for both of those i had uh literature classes for both of those i had speaking classes so speaking and listening would kind of come together speaking and listening classes for both of those in terms of the like non-grammar language speaking listening stuff so you'll have literature options and or like history politics options within that language so for example i did a russian history option then there was like the golden age of russian literature oh, yes and i did one all about love and medicine and melancholy and stuff like that and how they all like interweave in french which i really really recommend actually great tutor for that course and really really interesting so in terms of options and stuff like that you have to take outside courses during your first year and second year so for example i studied french and russian that was my degree i was doing joint honors and then i had to do an outside course so for my first year i chose linguistics and then for my second year optional courses I chose contemporary French politics and also like a sociology course or something like that, I think. So yeah, it's really nice that we get to do that at Edinburgh because you get to do modules and learn about things that you otherwise obviously wouldn't learn on your languages course. And when you're dealing with modules and everything like that, you'll have a personal tutor and your personal tutor is assigned to you at the start of your first year. And basically you'll go to them and they'll help you deal with all your timetable stuff, making sure that nothing clashes and also help you choose your optional course. And again, making sure that they don't clash, the space for you in the class and stuff like that. So things change a little bit each year, obviously more is expected of you as you go up through the ranks and things will get a little bit harder. The main difference for me between first year and second year, other than the fact that you need to pass at a slightly higher mark at the end of second year, was that my lectures went from being taken in English in first year, this is only for French because if they'd done it in Russian babes, I'm telling you now, I would have understood f**k all. Then when I moved into second year they were taken in French and then obviously same for fourth year. Um, and I believe that is the same for Spanish, German, whatever. Oh, quick little little snippets. We have a variety of different kind of class setups. So we have a lecture, which will be pretty much everyone in your course. Massive, massive lecture halls, three or 400 people will go in. One person will be at the front lecturing you and whatever it happens to be. And you just like take notes and whatever. You're not picked on, they don't ask you questions usually easy breezy then you have your tutorials which you'll have once a week you're uh, registered for these you're not for lectures and these will be a smaller group of people between like five and ten and you'll go in and that will be your speaking classes your grammar classes also lectures tutorials the seminars so i don't really know the difference between a seminar and tutorial i think a seminar is more like a small lecture situation so again you can ask questions you'll be asked to discuss things you might be put into groups uh, whereas the tutorial is much more personal you're in a smaller group and it's much more easy to like ask questions and be taught things and have kind of one-to-one -one attention occasionally that's my general understanding after four years of uni anyways <laughs> So we are really, really lucky and spoiled as languages students at the University of Edinburgh that most, if not all of our classes are in the main kind of George Square campusy area. We never have to go out of the city to get to our classes like some of the STEM and sciencey people. And our main building is called 50 George Square. We have our own little library on the first floor. And that is pretty much where all of your tutorials slash seminars will be held. So it's really, really nice and easy, especially when you're getting used to uni in your first couple of weeks. That that's just a place you're gonna keep going back to if you're studying languages. And then the lecture halls will be in and around George Square as well. And then you might have the odd tutorial seminar lecture a little bit further into Old Town. So in like the old medical building, which is beautiful anyway, so easy breezy. But yeah, just so you're aware, most of your classes will be in and around there. And there's also a street just beside George Square called McClue Street. McClurk, McClook, McClue. I think it's McClue. So you'll have little seminars, tutorials, um, maybe on Clue Street, and then also, like I said, George 
square. But I quickly want to add to this timetable where I study situation is that you'll get your timetable and this will be on my ed, our university platform. So our timetable rotates basically. So you have week A and week B and just just keep an eye out because this will say the destination obviously of each of your tutorials lecture and stuff but these might change a little bit despite the fact that you might have a french tutorial at the same time with the same person it might not be in the same place yes i just don't go to the wrong buildings because that's easily done my babe i'm not gonna lie <laughs> So one of the big pluses when you're studying at the University of Edinburgh is that pretty much everyone does a four year course minimum, I guess, and that's year abroad inclusive. So when you pop off to go and do your little year abroad, when you come back, all of your mates are still gonna be in the same year as you and you get to graduate together, have your final little last fourth year hurrah together, rather than if you're at any other UK universities, they're probably off, you know, God knows where, doing God knows what, having their little career, because most other courses are three year courses aside from if you're in Scotland slash at the University of Edinburgh. So, handsy dandy. So at Edinburgh, you have to do 30 weeks abroad, total of which eight consecutive weeks minimum needs to be spent in your target language country. So for example, I went to France for 22 weeks to learn French, and then Latvia for eight weeks to learn Russian. And you know, that time split's not great, I don't recommend it, but that's the kind of thing that you need to do. Okay, last but not least, get me knee up here and I. In terms of what's required of you in examinations, exams, examinations, there are a variety of different ways of testing the students at the University of Edinburgh studying languages. These do vary obviously again for each language, but for me there were essays, so these would vary between 1500 words to 3000 words usually, and there is a points deduction if your essays aren't in on time or you go above or below the 10% permitted range of words and then you might also be marked on your attendance to tutorials slash seminars your contributions in tutorials and seminars in your speaking classes it's just generally you'll be having to chat throughout those so yeah definitely try not to miss your speaking tutorials then you'll have like little language slash grammar um things that you have to do throughout the year for your languages you'll have your end of semester one exams your end of semester two exams solo or joint or group presentations etc Last but not least, my general opinions on studying languages at the University of Edinburgh and studying languages in general. So, loved it. Great experience. Brilliant, incredible. Let's just have a couple of quick notes. The languages department were generally quite nice department to be a part of. Slightly disorganised in terms of year abroad, particularly with the French speaking side. But, you know, nothing in email, can't deal with. In terms of the tutors and stuff like that most of them were really really good some of them were scary i had a couple of russian tutors that scared the living daylights out of me and i was scared to go to their classes but we got through we're here now and looking back you know they were fab <laughs> And I have asked around because I had friends that studied Norwegian and Arabic and Spanish and stuff. So I'm going to include some of their thoughts and like little messages around. So, so if you want to pause and have a little read of different things they've said, please feel free to do so. Hopefully the language you're studying slash potentially going to study is there. But yeah, I think it's, that's it for today. I've talked the hind leg of a donkey, I apologise. But yeah, thank you so much for listening slash watching. I hope this is helpful. Huge good luck if you're going to Edinburgh or wherever to study languages. And keep it easy breezy, keep it chill. <laughs> Bye!